Welcome to everybody. Uh, this is our second social distance mechanics meeting. Uh, this one's a little different. We have uh, it's a lot of umpires in here from other organizations, which welcome to those guys as well. We'll run through some ground rules on the meeting, um, just how it should be conducted. And then, as I said last week, uh, we'll stay on here as long as we need to to get everybody's questions. Um, if you could remain muted, that'd be great until we get through the mechanics portion of this. If you then have questions, by all means, unmute yourself. You can ask a question over the video conferencing software or in the bottom right hand corner. There is a chat box uh, for you to type in your question and send it. I would prefer if you addressed it to everybody so everybody can read your question and we'll get to it. But if you want to do it privately, that's fine too. Uh, we'll, like I said, we'll get to every question we can and uh, we'll roll through it. I'm going to share my screen for the first slide here. Okay, so what we've come up with, we spent a really long time on trying to come up with the best two-man system possible while remaining six feet away from every single player on the field, including the catcher. That wasn't exactly um, an easy task, and obviously there's going to be holes in this system, just like there is standard two-man. Um, there might be some increased holes, or umpires may be a little farther away for certain calls, but I think what we've come up with here uh, threads the needle as close as we can get it to remaining within the guidelines and covering what matters most importantly and prioritizing where we need to be. So it's a pretty basic setup here. The yellow dots are your umpires. The base umpire is taking on ball strike responsibility. He's taking that away from the plate umpire. So when you hear something like that, that means the plate umpire has way less responsibility for the day. Um, we have some bases only umpires in this organization. Those guys are probably not bases only umpires anymore in this system. There's a lot of responsibility on the base umpire now. Um, a position is now eliminated. You'll never be in a position if you're sticking with this uh, mechanics. So the position of your base umpire who has ball strike responsibility will de be dependent only on the runners on base. Okay, so that keeps it as, as simple and as close to what we're all used to as possible. Nobody on first and third, runner on first only, you're going to be in modified B to call balls and strikes. As he's in modified B, the plate umpire without his ball strike responsibility will be based on the batter. Okay, so that's why we distinguished here between right-handed hitter and left-handed hitter. The base umpire never moves the left-handed or right-handed hitter will determine where our plate umpire is. Um, this spot for the plate umpire, if you're not familiar with it, is a very, very safe position. Um, compared to other places on the field, I can't think of many places I'd rather stand and try to avoid getting hit with a batted foul ball. Um, and we've toyed around with moving slightly left, slightly right. But we found that this position for the plate umpire really gives us a good look at check swings, which we didn't anticipate. Um, but that's going to be our positioning with no runners on, first and third, first only. If anybody from any other organization needs these slides, I'd be happy to uh, email them to you for your own use. You can put your own logo on it, whatever you guys want to do. I'm going to switch slides. All right, so moving along here, we still have it distinguished between right-handed and left-handed hitter for the plate umpire's purpose. Anytime we have any situation other than what was on the first slide, so if we have anything other than runner on first only, first and third, or nobody on, our base umpire will then move into modified C position. It's not as clear in the, in the, in the slide here with the relationship between the, the circle, the yellow circle, and the pitcher's rubber, but you'll be back a little farther. Uh, than, than the top circle for the right-handed hitter. That's with bases loaded first and second, second and third, second only, and third only. Again, I can send that slide to anybody who needs it. That's positioning. Okay, we're going to go through responsibilities of each umpire. Like we said, a position is now eliminated. That doesn't exist anymore. No umpire will go out on any fly balls pretty logical based on the fact that we don't have a position anymore. So 
B and C, we wouldn't have went out anyway. Anything in the middle, uh, trouble balls, fair foul. We can't go out as the base umpire, and we definitely can't go out as uh, the base umpire with ball strike responsibility now. Besides balls and strikes, the great thing about this, there's some silver linings to it. Besides balls and strikes, everybody retains their previous responsibilities once the ball is put in play. So if you have a bat on a ball and a ball put in play, every responsibility remains exactly the same as normal two-man. This will help you when you try to explain it to your umpires, and I think it's helped our guys when we went out there and tested it out. Uh, John, there is one exception to that, um, which would be that your position on the field dictates your position for fly balls, not where the runners are, meaning that because the uh, field umpire is always starting out in B or C, he will have all fly balls within that cone, uh, and the plate umpire will have anything that's toward the line. Correct. Yeah, we'll get there. Whether or not you have base runners. Yep. Yeah, we're just no, under no circumstance could we have an umpire in the outfield in this system. During warm-ups, as we would normally suggest that umpires get behind a catcher and view pitches before the game or when a new pitcher arrives, I think we should still do that with the base umpire. We could have potentially movement of the baseball and uh, pitchers falling off the mound. We found that as an, as an obstacle to our view sometimes, moving slightly left, slightly right. As long as we can get that while it's in warm-ups, we're going to be better off. Uh, box and hit-by-pitch is equal responsibility, completely 50-50 down the middle. See it, call it, okay? There are some benefits to being the plate umpire being behind the batter. They have a pretty good look on hit by pitches, um, and they have a good look at check swings. Speaking of check swings, we're going to defer that completely to the plate umpire. So the base umpire will be the original calling umpire because he has ball strike responsibility. Any appeal will go back to the plate umpire. Uh, but we, he, to the web, best way I can logically say it is that we should allow the plate uh, the ball strike umpire to appeal to the plate umpire in this case. Don't just grab it yourself as a plate umpire. Plate umpire will also have primary responsibility as he always had on drop third strikes. So we have a great look at that. We're not obstructed by the catcher anymore. We're almost in a wedge to see whether the ball was picked cleanly by a catcher or not. We can call that and then we can call the subsequent tag no tag around the plate area. Problem areas have been pass balls with runners on third. Um, because we're in an unfamiliar area, because we don't, uh, we're not used to being there, there's gonna be spots where we get caught napping there. So if, we're, if, if you're putting that into play, you've gotta be hyper aware of runner on third, uh, pass ball, especially with a right-handed batter because now we're in that 1950s first base extended position we're going to have to do our best to rotate at least to the point of the plate. And to do that and not get hit with the throw, not get, not uh, cause interference with yourself and the pitcher, we've got to be on this immediately. Um, hopefully we can get beyond the point of the plate and get to a spot where we can get into a wedge, but we got to at least get to point of plate and third base extended if possible um, or if necessary. Plate umpire retains the baseballs. So we have plate umpire with two ball bags or one ball bag still. The base umpire will not handle any baseballs. The plate umpire, if you have a sanitizing uh, guideline that needs to happen, to me it's much easier for the plate umpire to get the baseballs from the dugout or the field reps or the tournament directors, whatever the case may be, rather than have the base umpire do it. Uh, base umpire is also going to be responsible for putting the ball in play. Um, we got a bunch of different opinions on this, but to me, the overriding factor is if you're going to be the one responsible for calling the pitch a ball or a strike, I think you should be the one to give the go ahead that you're ready and the fielder's ready for play and put it in play. Uh, real big parts of this that we picked up. We've done two of these sessions on the field already, so we're speaking from a place of experience already. Not a ton of experience, but probably some of the most experienced in the country with this system. It's I was pleasantly surprised by it, but the plate umpire does kind of look like he shouldn't be there if he doesn't do his job properly. And uh, hands on knees when the pitcher assumes a rubber for both umpires, I think is very important, um, especially for the plate umpire who doesn't have a ton to do in this system, but his responsibilities can't be passed on. So the plate umpire has both fair foul lines. 
He's got plays at the plate. He still has rotations down to third with a runner on first and a base hit and things of that nature that we can't really give up. But we all have to stay engaged, especially the plate umpire. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, we've had some veteran umpires work this system and miss rotations down to third base at a pretty alarming rate just because I think we're starting off in a different place than we're, than we're used to. And a lot of the stuff that we've had ingrained in our heads that we don't even have to think about anymore is constantly running through everybody's head and we're forgetting where we need to be at times. So stress to your umpires, and I'm certainly stressing to mine that are in this call, we've got to look engaged at all times and the plate umpire especially cannot miss a single responsibility. Otherwise, I think we're going to get a lot of pushback for wasting money on a plate umpire if he's not doing his job properly. Uh, one thing we picked up yesterday, which I think looks great, there's going to be situations where we have a base umpire calling a pitch, ball or strike, and then he's going to have a potential stealing runner. These are going to be some difficult situations for a base umpire to handle. So I think we should take into consideration uh, assignments to that position if it's a single game, but also teach the mechanics that we worked on yesterday. The base umpires, you know, ball strike mechanics are very similar to what we, were, we would teach plate umpires anyway. We want them hands on knees and sort of locked in to view the pitch. And by priority, we're going, see the pitch, start moving to where you have to get to secondarily, and then thirdly, call the pitch. So if it makes sense, it's very similar to what you would do behind the plate as is, or, or like we're used to. You'd be locked in primarily to, to view if the pitch is in the strike zone or not then you would either clear the catcher or move your right leg to start to call a strike or whatever your mechanics are, then you would present it and make your strike call. Let's try to keep that same logic for base umpires right now. Lock in, see the pitch. If you have to steal a third from C position, I think we should see the pitch, start to work in towards the plate area, and then grab your strike call as you get that angle on the steal a third or a potential back pick at first base. There's a lot of situations like that that are going to happen if we spend too much time on presenting the call of a strike or a ball. I think we're going to miss a lot of things that happen on the field. Okay. Another thing we saw very important is to keep your head forward at all times as a base umpire. We're going to see base umpires take the field call balls and strikes in the middle of the diamond, and they're going to turn their head as they normally would, or strike threes, they're going to look down or look to the left or right. We can't do that. We cannot do that as the ball strike responsibility umpire on the bases. We'll get to questions in a minute. Kurt, Jerry, you got anything to add? Yeah, I had the notes. Uh, one of the things is uh, that I had was communication is a, a big, big deal, especially considering the fact that people are doing the same thing, but in a different way. And, uh, the uh, brains kind of get scrambled. There were uh, a handful of times where the ball was hit down the line and you had two guys that were hustling to go get the, the, uh, the call in the outfield because the, uh, the plate guy wasn't calling them off. So that, that has to happen. I had hustle for the plate guys. Uh, it is a really, really bad look if the guy's just standing there, even on routine hits up to uh, the, the, the shortstop with nobody on. We got to make sure that that plate guy is getting up towards that 45-foot line. You're not doing anything. Uh, you, you're you're going to do four or five games in a day. I know it's a lot to ask a lot of us to kind of hustle to that 45-foot line, but with just standing there waiting for a check swing, waiting for a hit by pitch, waiting for that uh, four or five plays of the entire game, you, you got to make it look like you're doing something. Uh, the, and the other thing was uh, make sure that John touched on this in terms of rotations. And I think this uh, holds true even from the original uh, uh, rotations the, without having to worry about the social distancing is I think people are reacting and then realizing, hey, I have to get to this spot, and then they go and they're behind it, rather than knowing that that ball is, there's a runner on first base, that ball is hit to the outfield, and now we, our responsibility as a plate guy is to get to third base. So we need to start going when that ball is hit to the outfield. So we are now sitting and waiting for that uh, 
base runner to come tearing around second base. So we're in the exact right position that we need to be for that call at third base, especially now when there's virtually no other responsibilities that the uh, plate guy has. So when doing it yesterday, the uh, biggest thing that I saw as a, uh, a, pro uh, a sticking point or a problem point for the, the, the base guy that's calling balls and strikes is the secondary call after the ball and strike. And John touched on it. We need to go ahead and call it. We need to be uh, set when we're viewing the pitch but we do not need to be set when we are calling and letting everybody know what's going on. So I, I, I was up all of the uh, umpires that I was helping out in the, in the field, working on post pitch steps, just getting in the, the idea and the practice of the job's not done with just strike, especially with people on the ba on bases, there's going to be delayed steals. The, uh, higher levels that you do, these, these guys are going to be on the move and it's just pushing and pushing and pushing. So John touched on the, uh, the check swing. We have to make sure that the, the attitude or the, in the mindset of, the, of the, uh, the base umpire is that we are immediately appealing unless it, you're 1,003% sure that he did, yes, indeed, he did go. If it is even a little bit of a question, John, did he go? And you wait for the answer. So th that's a so that that was that was a big thing that I saw. With you know, we're used to the plate guy appealing to the to the bases, and we just have to flip that mindset that we the the same guy that's calling the balls and strikes is still appealing, and he has to go right away. So the hit by pitch. And that's 50-50 in, uh, in terms of responsibility and the uh, drop third strike. We really have to make sure that we're communicating, especially as the uh, plate guy, to make sure that the, everybody in the entire place knows that, that no, the ball's down. Yes, he did. The ball's down. So that, that's, those are the things that I saw as kind of sticking points or problem areas just in the five hours that we were out uh, yesterday doing this. Yep, there's a lot of umpires in here, even from our group who weren't in the first meeting, but the, the ball strike, if, if your issue or your concern is ball strike accuracy, I don't think that's gonna be the problem with this system. Um, you know, I think we're all gonna have an adjustment period to call balls and strikes from behind the mound. But the first time we ran this, uh, we had six coaches text me and say that's the best were most consistent strike zones they've had in a long time. And I think it's because we're getting, we're getting out away from the catcher and we're, we have a better view and some lower level or average to, to below average umpires or guys that are not doing college level baseball and above are getting a better look and are calmer without all the obstructions around the plate area. And we can really use a catch, the catcher as a reference point. We're really not missing that pitch at mid shin anymore and calling that a strike. I think there's some positives to this, um, these, these guidelines and these restrictions that we're under uh, that we might as well make the best of it. But also the plate umpire no longer has to wait for a catcher to get out of the box before he can go down to the 45 foot line. He doesn't have to clear the batter. He doesn't have to clear anything. That ground ball is hit. Just go. Just it's a straight line shot for you. And uh, if you're behind the left-handed batter, you just gained a free 10 feet to get up to the 45 foot line. So you got, of course, you got to get to the foul line but you're starting almost 10 feet closer to first base than you ever did. So there's pros and cons, but, you know, we wouldn't be being real honest about this if we didn't highlight the pros as much as the, as much as we do the harping on the negatives. Yeah, I was amazed. I, I personally was amazed with how well that the guys did from, you know, 70, 80 feet away looking at it. I would have thought that there would have been uh, some sort of struggle with defining the inside and the outside of the plate. There, there's really not, especially if you're using the uh, the uh, landmarks of the of the catcher. So, and I and I've thought this for years that the biggest struggle that guys have behind the plate is all of the distractions that happen, everything that can catch your eye, the uh, batter starting to move, the the movement of the ball, the the fighting, the the instinct to get the hell out of the way of a 70, 80 mile an hour projectile coming directly at your head. So, it's 
this is pretty much like watching a baseball game and looking over to the guy sitting next to you and say, that's, that's a strike. <laughs> and then just let everybody know. So. Jerry, you have anything to add before we get to questions? Uh, uh, just to touch on, you know, something that uh, Kurt had mentioned on the drop uh, on the, the check swings, you know, I saw it yesterday on one occasion where the, the base umpire calling balls and strikes grabbed a uh, a check swing that uh, um, clearly wasn't anywhere close to uh, going. And, and again, I think that unless he's two thirds of the way through the zone, the base umpire should never grab that. He should always go to the plate umpire who's got the best look at that. Uh, because in being You're breaking up there, Jerry. If you get a better connection, we'll come back to you. Um, I'm going to go to the chat box for some questions. Once I get through the first question, if somebody wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, fire away. Uh, since the responsibilities are reversed, does the base umpire start the hand signals and the plate guy answer? The answer to that will be yes. But also, for whatever reason, the consistency in which we gave signals pre-pitch was nowhere near what I expected it to be. We, we didn't do it nearly enough. So, especially in this new foreign safety zone was better for the play guy. Dan, I'm going to mute you. Just wait a second. Um, the, the hand signals needed to be given way more often, especially in this foreign system um, that we're all not used to. We should be communicating as much as humanly possible. I think whenever we get a request to conference on a call, we should do that. I think whenever a fly ball is in the air, we should communicate exactly what our responsibility is to our partner. And there's nothing wrong with doing that while the ball's in the air. Who has the baseball? Where are you going? And if you're not going anywhere, say so. There's nothing wrong with being too sure. And I would start getting the fields a little bit earlier to get a little more thorough pregame. Dan, did you have a question? Yes, I did actually. Go ahead. Well, actually, it's not more of a question, more of my input on the, if I could give my input on the training, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, Dan was at our first training uh, two weeks ago. Go ahead, Dan. It was actually a blast, by the way. And, uh, guys, um, this was actually one of the better ideas that I, I couldn't even come up with. I mean, I'm a member of multiple organizations. And to be fair, this is probably the best way to get these games in and get these games out. Not only, and not only could you see a pass ball better, but you could also see the zone better. I mean, John, you mentioned that the coaches that texted you said the most consistent strikes on they've seen. Yep. I don't know if it's something I did or anything, <laughs> but uh, I thought I thought the training went really well, and I thought um, uh, for the other umpires that are not in our organization, in the organization, or that are from out of state, I think it's worth a try. Honestly, you don't want to be wearing your hot protective gear um, with a, 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 a protective mask, a nurse's mask in this case, on a hot day. It's better off. It's better off just going with this because a not only does it help you better, b it also protects your health as well. Thanks, Dan. Um, next question is, uh, during a drop third strike, is your view obstructed at all? Absolutely not. I mean, you've got a picture-perfect, clear view of uh, whether the ball goes in the catcher's mitt or not. And, um, you know, it, it's hard to describe to you guys unless we got you out. We're, we're still have more training sessions to uh, go through. But when you physically get to the spot we're talking about where the yellow dots were in the slides, that is, that's clear as day to you. Um, anybody else have a question on video they want to ask? Uh, play at third base, plate umpire goes to make the call, but a runner is coming home. Does the base umpire go to the home plate then? Um, I can't see a situation in which this would happen because we don't have any umpires going out into the outfield. Um, 
so I'm trying to figure out a situation where that would happen. If 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 you can come up with one, I'll I'll certainly answer it. Um, can you go back to Jerry's point? What was Jerry's? Jerry, before you broke up, what were you talking about? Uh, I don't know if you can hear me any better now. I can hear you, but your video is a little blurry. Uh, yeah, I just – on that check swing, you know, we saw it yesterday where the, the base umpire is grabbing a check swing that was, in my own opinion, from where I'm looking behind the backstop, wasn't even close. Uh, and I just think that we can't do that because we don't have a good look at it. If he's not two-thirds, three-quarters of the way through the strike zone uh, – with that check swing, then I think we just have to call the pitch and then go to the guy behind the plate because he has the absolute best look at that from his angle. Yeah. A uh, question from Tony Stapleton. What gear is the plate umpire wearing in this system? Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you what our requirements are and then what I would not think is unreasonable for an organization to do. Our requirements for the umpire at the plate, because I think it's such a safe place to be, we're requiring them to wear a cup and a mask. Uh, we had an umpire at our training yesterday who wore full-blown plate gear. No problem. If that's what our guys want to do, that's perfectly fine. But I think where we're standing, the only requirement um, for liability purposes and safety purposes is a, is a plate mask, a, like a protective steel mask, not a uh, surgical mask, and a cup. If somebody wants to wear shin guards, that's fine. A chest protector, fine. Uh, but also, you guys can come up with your own restrictions on that based on your organization. But um, that's what we're requiring, one plate mask one uh, and a cup. Uh, play at third overthrow. This would cause the base ump rotation. No. Uh, in this case, I'm assuming, uh, let's say, runner on first only, base hit to right field, throw to third with an umpire, with a plate umpire covering third base. Since he's watching the throw, right? So follow me on this. The plate umpire is rotating to third and should be watching the ball out of the outfielder's hand, right, to third base. To me, the plate umpire has the best shot to then read that throw as a bad one and start to work his way to the plate. So this is why we should be in the cutout for this play at third and not so much in foul territory because if this is an overthrow at third, you're going to have a little bit of a head start on the runner that's sliding into third and you're going to be inside the diamond and out of his way and not get clipped with this throw that is now on the fence line of the third base dugout. So there, in this system, I can't imagine any scenario where a base umpire would have to then rotate home, if that answers your question. Um, any additional information released from the state today regarding gameplay? Um, yes. The restrictions came out as we were on this call, or the guidelines. I haven't read through them yet. Um, so we'll get to those later, but in New Jersey, at least, uh, that no competitive games can take place until July 6th, and uh, practices can start for baseball teams on June 22nd. Uh, on fields that do not have backstops, that do not allow you to stand far enough back, what do you recommend then? Um, well, I don't think it's a – you're going to really be standing more, more towards where an on-deck batter would stand than you would where an umpire would normally stand. Um, so I would imagine if you don't have a field that gives you six feet of space from the batter, I don't really think you should be playing baseball in that field. Um, so I hope that answers that. I don't think we're going to have many fields out there that don't have six feet for you to go behind the back of the batter. Uh, sorry if I missed it. Plate umpire takes the play at first. No. The base umpire retains all his previous responsibilities once the ball is put in play. So we can that's a that's a pretty flat rule of thumb there that you can stick with. If the ball is put in play, revert right back to normal two man. That's all the questions in the chat box. If anybody has a question on a video that they want to ask, fire away. Yeah, John. It's been hey, uh, if you got the uh, base umpire in charge of balls and strikes, and you also have him putting the ball in play. But you have the plate umpire basically in charge of all plate trafficking, including hold, holding the foul ball. My question is, is who is the UIC? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. 
Um, I don't know what, how often that's going to come up as a real thing. Uh, you know, if it's important who the UIC is for travel baseball tournaments or whatever games you're working. But I would say for this case that the, uh, the plate umpire would retain uh, UIC duties if you have lineup cards exchanged or you have uh, substitutions coming in. To me, those are big parts of the UIC. That's still going to go through the plate umpire. And uh, I really would feel terrible about putting yet another responsibility on that base umpire if you want to have him with uh, lineup cards and such. So, um, you know, I would imagine if this, if, if this for some weird situation happens in college baseball, I would imagine the, uh, the stopwatch would then go to the plate umpire. I think the base umpire has enough on his plate. So I would say the UIC is still the plate umpire. Any updates besides the cancellation of the June 26th games? Probably looking at starting after July 4th weekend. Yeah, guys, anything specific to New Jersey, we'll get to in a few minutes. I want to, I'll let everybody who's not in New Jersey get out of here before we're, uh, before we get on to that stuff. Um, any uh, organization leaders or, or anybody of that nature who's not in our organization have any questions, we'll take those. If not, we're finished with uh, everything we have to say. John, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, so we'll, if, if you're uh, from another organization, you guys can feel free to get off the call. We're, everything else will probably have to do with uh, specifically the, the TSEUA here in South Jersey and the surrounding area. Uh, but if you want to ask a question, fire away. Hey, John, will perfect game start? In other states before here, like yeah, they've already started in other states. I mean, I mean, like, um, what was it, Piscataway? There, that's still got to wait for us, right? Correct. New York, 